back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. I thought today we would just do some guitar hunting, but instead of Gibsons, let's go ahead and check out some Fenders. It's been a long time since I've actively searched out a Fender. Well, at least a used one anyways. For the recently listed ones, things that stand out, the Walnut Elite Stratocaster. That's pretty cool. For being Walnut, that's a really, really dark finish. Maybe it just has something to do with this guy's lighting as well. Because the back looks a little bit more traditional. I like how it has that like fake neck through vibe going on because of the multi-pieced body. That neck looks pretty nice too. And hey, the Mother of Pearl tip tuners. Pretty cool. Whoa. What? <laughs> Did somebody put a locking nut system on that? Now that's a nice looking Stratocaster. American Deluxe from 2005. Huh. So kind of a uh, super strat like. Humbucker in the bridge with a pickup ring. That makes all the difference to me. Not having the pick guard, having some sort of a flame top, and having a pickup ring. That looks nice. And that whole blue finish, it looks like they went as far as putting an ebony fretboard with abalone inlays. Especially the fact that they give it the sculpted heel joint and potentially went as far as giving it an ash body. It's either that or that's just a really streaky piece of alder. Oh wow, they've even got one of those. Looks like it's just a thin veneer on top, nothing too crazy. Because we still even have the comfort cut, that's nice. Sometimes when they do flame tops on strats, you lose that. But that's normally only if they do binding on top of it. What's going on with this? A Guitar Center 30th Anniversary Custom Shop Telecaster. Interesting, from 1994. I don't know about you guys, but 5,000 bucks for something this ornate? Seems kind of like a deal. When was this listed? Six months ago. Maybe they made a whole bunch of these. I'm not sure. Well, it couldn't be that many if it's labeled 17 of 19. I think the thing is, is the custom shop was doing a bunch of small limited edition runs. I believe my copper caster was one of these from about the same time. But this thing actually looks pretty good. I like the see-through pick guard, the whole vine inlay. That's not something I've ever seen on a Telecaster or any Fender before. I know Gibson has something very similar to that. But being from 1994, this thing is clean. Still a bolt-on neck, so no crazy set neck like sometimes you can't find. Oh, that's nice. I like that they actually put it on there. Looks like there was another one that sold around the same price. That was six years ago. So you can kind of get a better idea of what this looks like in person. I guess there's not that much special to it besides the neck and the flame top veneer and being a limited edition finish. I wouldn't mind reviewing that model. I think it's pretty cool. Here's a Kenny Wayne signature Stratocaster. So we just did the different Kenny Wayne signature. That one's really cool. You can check out the full review and demo, the whole chambered out Stratocaster body. Well, this is the one that they had done before. It just has his racing stripes on it. It's probably uh, Mexican made, it'd be my guess. Yep, looks like it. That's relatively affordable too. Looks like what makes this one interesting is a 12 inch radius. So much flatter than a regular Strat with giant frets. And here we've got a crazy Warmoth Fender custom build going on together, pure white Stratocaster, except for they went with uh, all humbuckers in single coil format and a mirrored pick guard. Okay, so they've kind of got the Supreme Stratocaster going on, but just not exactly. They just kind of chromed it all out. Even the pickups, wow, those match great. Interesting choice to use a black nut on this guitar though, but locking tuners. Now it's just reminding me of the Silent Siren Telecaster, except for in Stratocaster format. Oh, and what is that? Is that how you adjust the truss rod on this neck? Maybe, and it looks like they painted over the fretboard. Yeah, that paint job looks a bit rough, but it looks great from far away. Oh, and one of the Artisan ones. So kind of like the Parallel Universe series, the custom shop had an Artisan run. I would have loved to have checked these things out, but they're custom shops. Meaning it's harder for me to find these at a dealer that's willing to give me, you know, a great price for review and demo purposes, and then not lose money come resale time. So this one, we got the P90 in the neck with the regular Telecaster bridge pickup, the tortoiseshell pick guard, with some pretty exotic woods going on here. I mean, just check out that neck, and I love the ambered over tuners. And this right here is actually a flamed koa top. But other than that, looks like a maple neck with an ebony fretboard. Nice. With a compound radius fretboard. Ooh, and 6,100 jumbo frets. So nine and a half down here. So it's a little bit more rounded, but then it flattens up to 12, which is what I'm more so used to. This is pretty cool, even spec wise on top of the figured woods. 
What have we got going on with this? So it's a custom shop from 96. That's apparently brand new old stock. Once again, early 90s, they did a bunch of those tiny little runs of guitars. Uh, like a see-through transparent cherry-esque finish with a gold anodized pick guard potentially. I really like the see-through red knob switch to, oh, even, even the tremolo arm. Okay, that's pretty cool. They should have put a little LED light in there so it just lights up because that's exactly what that looks like. But what really drew my attention was this, the red dot inlays. I can't say I find this guitar attractive, but I like the quirky specs and we get a bird's eyed maple neck. And hey, there's one of those uh, transparent red headstocks. We were just talking about that on the Tash Sultana Stratocaster. Oh, nice. I did not even see that until this photo. You even get transparent red pickup covers. You know, if you like red and gold, this is your Stratocaster right here. It even calls it ruby red on the back. That's pretty sweet. Here's a nice one. Originally made in Japan, once again in the early 90s, the 90s Stratocasters and Fenders are just really jumping out at me because I'm just kind of skipping through all the pages looking for something that excites me. I'm not really into just, you know, standard Stratocasters. I like something that stands out a bit more. And this does that in spades. That is beautiful. Love that see-through green finish with gold hardware even. Ooh, it's kind of like got a, a matted goldness. The white pickguard. I'm not sure if that's exactly what I want on this or not. I think I do because it matches the inlays and it reminds me of like Spearmint. It's a refreshingly nice looking Stratocaster. Nice earthy tones on that fretboard and neck as well. Nice and tinted. Yep, that's an absolute winner. So how much is this thing? A little over a thousand bucks, currently located in the UK. Doesn't seem to be the worst price in the world as compared to some of the other brand new fenders that I've been bringing back from Japan. Looks like that exact same shop also has a blue one. Ooh, sparkle blue. So this one has a moto pick guard. Maybe that green one would have looked good with that as well. Yeah, this one's pretty cool too. I can see why they're asking a slight premium over their other one for this. But I think if I had to choose just one, I'd probably go with that green one. It fits more occasions. There's one of those offset Telecasters. I've done a review on one of those. It was the Chicago Music Exchange exclusive. But I bring it up because, uh, because Japan's actually doing a brand new one. So they're made in Japan. In order to import one, it's going to be just as much as the American version. What is that? Fender Japan STR75R Pro Feel Series. Okay, it's like a, a bird's eye top? What? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a bird's eye top Stratocaster decked out with like what looks like a Floyd Rose. HSH setup, brass knobs, double toggle switches. Not my style of guitar, but that fretboard looks absolutely glossy. When you get those things with the ebony fretboards and they've been played in, they feel like glass. They're great. Here's another freak of a strat. Okay, so Eric Johnson. Okay, maybe it's not as freaky as I thought. Okay, l let me go back to this photo. What do you guys see? I see a partial pick guard that only covers right there. And then the rest of the Stratocaster is just like left blank and Eric Johnson's name is attached to it. But then when you click on it, you can see it's just a shadow. Ooh, and a Daybreak Telecaster. Those are kind of cool. I think I did the Stratocaster, didn't I? Yeah. I think the reason why I went with the Strat is because somebody sponsored that episode through the New Guitar Day program. But the tellies get binding. Here's another teal Stratocaster. Ah, it's got the noiseless pickups though. I'm not a big fan of those. You know, despite this one being custom shop, I think that old one from Japan actually looks better to me. Certain bird's eyes can look pretty nice because they usually have some quilting action to them. Looks like we get the locking spursals too. But let's see if we can find one last cool one to talk about. Yeah, I think we can end it on this Telecaster. Well, at least the Telecaster body. <laughs> so this is just a, a black bound Telecaster with gold hardware. I think that looks really nice, especially with the back binding on top of it. Let's see if we can find a, a complete one. Maybe the neck was interesting. Yep, that's exactly what I was expecting. Matching headstock. 
Ooh, that looks great. The black on top of the maple and stark white binding on top of it. That is a good looking telly. I think this was the opposite of the Daybreak series, if I remember correctly. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. I'm sorry my upload schedule's kind of uh, been disrupted. It, it, it's gonna be a rough month, month and a half, but after we get through this rough transitioning period, uh, I think things will get a lot better and we should get very consistent uploads. So thank you, troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.